and immigrant workers crushed beneath thousands of pounds of railroad ties. You call it an accident. I say it was murder. Have Gun, Will Travel. Starring Mr. John Daner as Paladin. San Francisco, 1875, the Carlton Hotel, headquarters of a man called Paladin. Oh, Mr. Paladin, glad to have you back. Thank you. My key, please. Of course. Well, it's been quite a while since we've seen you, about uh, three weeks, I dare say. About that. And my mail, please. Of course. I don't believe I remember you being away for this long at any one time. He was, sir. Huh? It must have been quite an extensive trip. Yes, it was. Would you have Hey Boy bring my bags up? Oh, uh, uh, Hey Boy is no longer with us, but I'll see... Hey Boy you... is no longer here. Uh, that's right. His employment terminated, um, well, a week ago today, as a matter of fact. Terminated? Why? I don't know, sir. Did he get another job somewhere? I don't really know. Well, he must have given an excuse for leaving. The Carlton automatically gave him a release when he didn't show up for three consecutive days. Did it ever occur to the Carlton that he might be ill? Well, after all, it isn't our responsibility. Has anyone seen him? Really, Mr. Paladin, it isn't that important. These people are very easily replaced. I assure you the Carlton will continue to give you the same excellent service that we've all... I've just had an example of your excellent service. Even if you've had embarrassing dandruff for years, you can get rid of it now in three minutes. That's all it takes with Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo. Yes, unsightly dandruff's gone in three minutes with Fitch, quickest, easiest of all leading shampoos. What's more, using Fitch regularly is guaranteed to keep embarrassing dandruff away. Just apply in the unique Fitch manner. Before you wet hair, rub in one minute. This way, Fit Shampoo penetrates right down to the scalp. Next, add water. Lather one minute to wash every trace of dandruff out of your hair. Then rinse one minute. All that loosened dandruff goes down the drain. In three minutes, with Fitch, one rubbing, one lathering, one rinsing, dandruff's gone. At the same time, gentle Fitch can leave your hair up to 35% brighter. To get rid of dandruff problems forever, brighten hair too. Use Fitch regularly. Get Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo today, only 59 cents. Hey, boy didn't leave a message for me with anyone at the hotel. And it was unlikely that he would quit his job without an explanation, unless something was wrong. I didn't know where Hey, boy lived, but I remembered that he had an uncle who ran a curio shop I had patronized in the past. San Francisco was heavy with fog when I arrived in Chinatown for a visit with Mr. Chung, the owner of Mandarin Galleries. Welcome to the Mandarin. Good afternoon, Mr. Chung. Ah, uh, Mr. Paladin, I did not recognize you at first. I trust each dawn has brought you a day of success. And each dusk a night of contentment. Your visit is most fortuitous. Only yesterday... I received several new pieces from Canton. I am sure they will be of great interest to you. Oh, beautiful workmanship. The case is teakwood, isn't it? Yes, and the chessmen are of ivory. Oh, exquisite. Exquisite. But right now, Mr. Chung, I'm afraid all I want is some information. I hope I may be of service. I'm looking for a hay boy, um, Kim Chang. I have not seen my nephew, Kim Chang, for several days. Mr. Chung, Hey Boy is a friend of mine. Is he in any kind of trouble? He spoke to you, perhaps, of his brother, Kim Sung? Yes, he did mention that his brother was coming to the United States. His passage and entry permit was arranged by a railroad company. And I suppose Kim Sung signed a contract to repay the railroad by working for them on a construction crew. Many of our people have come here this way. Uh-huh. 
Mr. Paradin, I have in my pocket two letters. Kim Chang, whom you call Hey Boy, left them with me for safekeeping. The first one is from his brother. If you would like, I will translate it for you. Yes, yeah, please. The first part is of no importance. But this, the head man, Travis, cheats us of our wages, gives us less food than is our right. Because we are Chinese, he thinks we will do nothing. Last night, when I spoke to him in protest, I was beaten. I am afraid now to stay here. I am afraid Travis will kill me as a lesson to the others. Please, my brother, you must help me. That is all. May I see the letter? It is in Chinese. No, I just want to see the postmark. Coldwater, Utah. Is this where Hey Boy's gone? He left ten days ago when he received this other letter from the railroad company. You may read it for yourself. Uh, mm. <laughs> Under the circumstances, Mr. Paladin, I am surprised the letter would include regrets. Ah, uh, uh, signed, Maury Travis, section superintendent. He doesn't explain the accident or even tell where Kim Sung is buried. Why did Hey Boy go to cold water alone, Mr. Chung? When it is hurt, even the most gentle kitten will have the fury of a tiger. But still only the strength of a kitten. May I keep these letters for a while? There is something you can do to help him, Mr. Paladin. I can try to keep Hey Boy alive, Mr. Chung. <laughs> Four days' ride from San Francisco brought me to a tiny settlement on a huge plateau, shadowed by a crouching mountain peak. The railroad superintendent's office, Coldwater Division, was a small frame shack with a porch some three steps above a dirt road. Looking for somebody? Mr. Travis. You found him. Come on in. Oh. Getting chilly, ain't it? Yeah. It is. Always does this time of the afternoon. What can I do for you? My card. Uh, have gun, will travel, wire, paladin, San Francisco. What's all that mean? I don't understand. You're a target, Mr. Travis. Oh? Someone intends to kill you. I'm offering my services as a bodyguard. Why would anyone want to kill me? We all have enemies. Some we're not aware of. I'm sure you're no exception. Well... You remember a Chinese boy by the name of Kim Sung who was killed in an accident here not long ago? Yeah, yeah, I remember. I have a letter here that claims it was not an accident. Well, let me see that. Ah, this could be a Chinese laundry ticket for all I know. I assure you it is not. I'll take that back if you don't mind. Oh, well, sure. <laughs> now, this letter was sent to the dead man's brother and claims that it was not an accident. Now the brother wants revenge. His brother... Kim Chang, a little fella? That's right. Well, I got news for you, Paladin. I don't need to hire a gun to protect me against a coolie. I've already met up with that little China boy, and I'm still alive and kicking. And the China boy? He's in jail. A crazy fool came at me with a knife. If the sheriff hadn't stuck his nose in, he'd be in his grave. I'm sorry I bothered you, Mr. Travis. Doctor, will you psychoanalyze me? Uh, well, what seems to be the problem? I'm a germ, a bathroom germ. And they're the most unwanted kind, you know. Spread disease and cause bathroom odor. Go on. Well, my mother and father abandoned me at a very early age. Uh oh? Yes, you see, even germs hate germs. Everybody hates germs. Look at all the women who put Lysol in their suds every week when they clean their bathrooms. I know. They know Lysol is murder for bathroom germs. Disinfects from one cleaning to the next as nothing else can. Uh-huh. And my landlady just got some new pine-scented Lysol. So you see, doctor, I'm getting a very bad inferiority complex. A doctor. 
Oh, where are you going? To see a psychiatrist. But why? Who ever heard of a germ talking? Use Lysol brand disinfectant, the modern easy way to get bathrooms really clean every week. Regular or the new pine scented for as little as 29 cents. After convincing the sheriff that I was a friend of his only prisoner, he led me back to a cell where Hayboy was lying on the mattress on the floor, apparently asleep. The sheriff said he was weak because he refused to eat and that he had gotten the bruises on his face and arms in the fight with Travis. At my request, he left me alone with Hayboy. All right, Paladin, but I'll have to lock you in. All right. Hey, boy. Where are my cigars? My newspapers. Oh, oh, Mr. Paladin. <laughs> Hello, hey, boy. Ah, Mr. Paladin it is much surprised to see you here. Yeah, they're a long way from San Francisco. Oh, yes, uh, many miles of sorrow. I know. Uh, Mr. Chung told me about your brother. We were to be together again after all these years. Now my brother is dead and the man who killed him lives and goes unpunished. This is not right. Keep your voice down. We don't know who can hear us. Uh, yes, sir. Now, hey, boy. Are you sure that it was not an accident? Oh, yes, sir, I'm sure. Travis struck my brother with a club, and then he made it appear an accident. He threw a load of timbers off a flat car into his body, and two of the men who worked with Kim Sung saw it happen. Why didn't they tell the sheriff? With two witnesses, Travis could be brought to trial. Oh, who would take the word of Chinese against a white? Somehow, his punishment will come at my hands. No, it won't work. Even if he doesn't kill you, if you should kill him, you'd be arrested for murder. Why, either way, it's something I must do. Ah, uh, uh, Mr. Paladin, you come to take me out of jail? Uh, I'm afraid I can't do that until we clear the charges against you. Hmm. Hey, boy, tell me the names of the two men who witnessed your brother's murder. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I took oath to never repeat their names. It is for their protection. Please understand, I cannot break my pledge, not even to you. Yeah, I understand, hey, boy. But I will tell you, they work in a crew under a man named Brady. Yeah, I saw Brady this afternoon. Oh, yes, he a mean, very strong. He like a bull. He helped Travis throw the railroad ties on my brother's body. Hmm. Hey, boy, I'm going to tell the sheriff to fix you some supper, and you eat it. Oh, he saw me, Sir Paladin. I eat it. Good. I'll be back to see you in the morning. Brady's labor crew was huddled on the ground around a battered kettle that bubbled over a small fire, eating a watery stew out of tin plates. They hardly looked up as I approached. When of you speak English? Somebody must understand. Well, I'm sure you all remember Kim Sung. Two of you saw what really happened to him. Two of you know his death was not an accident. Two of you can put Maury Travis in jail. Well? Is this the stuff you eat? Seems you like slop. It seems you don't mind living in filth like slaves. You'll watch one of your brothers die and then lick the boots of the man who killed him. No. Ah, so. Someone does understand. All right, you little monkeys. On your feet. Time to... Who are you? What are you doing here? Talking to some of my friends. Your friends? Clear out. Not until I'm ready. I said get out of here. Put that axe down. I'll go when I'm ready. Now I said... You're good with that axe, but not good enough. I don't know who you are, but I'm going to tear your head off. <laughs> Oh, 
Now, if any of you men have anything to say, speak up now. I want to help you. Which of you spoke up before Brady came in? All right. If you change your mind, I'll be with Travis. Why is it that they can't stay married in Hollywood? Now, for the first time, March McCall's charts 25 years of the movie capital's mixed-up marriages, reports the reasons that more than 200 Hollywood stars give for their own divorces. It's more fantastic than any movie fiction. Don't miss the feature entitled The Disgrace of Hollywood in March McCall's. Also, you'll find lots of interesting, helpful ideas for you and your family in this big new issue of McCall's. Learn how you can earn an extra $1,000 this year by just a few hours' work each week. Also, discover how you can get your husband to talk frankly about the most intimate and important problems in your married life. Read, My Husband Won't Talk About Sex, Money, or the Children in the new March issue of McCall's. It's on all newsstands now, and it's loaded with exciting features, more than 40 in all. Get your March issue of McCall's today. Two of the immigrants could step forward and free Hayboy, but they were afraid. Afraid of the foreman Brady and his boss, Maury Travis. Men died quickly and quietly on the Coldwater Railroad Division. I went to Travis's office, but he wasn't there. I decided to wait. After three hands of solitaire, he returned. What are you doing in my office, Paladin? I'm playing solitaire. I want to know what you're doing here. First you tell me somebody's trying to kill me, then you get one of my crews all riled up, and now you beat up my foreman. Let's have it straight. What do you want? I told you this afternoon job. But since you've decided to wear a gun, you seem to be fully prepared to take care of yourself. I assume my services are unnecessary. Your services include nosing around and what doesn't concern you? Hey, Travis, I told you your men could have the freedom of the town as long as they didn't start any trouble. What are you talking about, Sheriff? That Chinese work gang of yours, they just broke into jail. Took your friend out with them, Paladin. Why don't you stop them? Forty-five men with crowbars and pickaxes? Where'd they go? They're heading straight for this office. You suppose they're looking for someone in particular, Travis? Sheriff, I want protection. If you think I'm going to try facing down a bunch of Chinese armed with picks, you're crazy. All right, then me and my men will stop them. Uh, most of your boys are at the saloon in town. I know that. I was with them till I heard what Paladin did to my foreman. I'll round them up. How are your men going to stop 45 rebel laborers, Travis? With shotguns, Paladin. I'll kill every one of... No. Sheriff. What's the matter, Travis? You see a ghost out there? They're standing out in, in front. All of them. Just staring at me. Just just staring, Paladin. You've got to help me. You say they're your friends. Maybe they'll listen to you. Go out there and talk to them. You said you wanted a job. All right, then. I'm hiring you. All right. First, there's a matter of my fee. Five hundred dollars in advance. Five hundred? And in hard cash on the line now. All right. All right, I won't argue with you. The money's in the safe. I'll get it. That gun comes high, Paladin. Yes, it does, Sheriff. His hide isn't worth that much. But I'm going to use the money to help heal some scars Travis left on a friend of mine. Looking at it that way, it hardly seems enough. Here. Here you are. Five hundred in gold. Put the bag on the table, Travis. Yeah. I'm going out to talk to your friends. Hey, boy. Tell the men to go back to camp. Please stay out of the way, Mr. Paladin. You're not taking Travis. Mr. Paladin, forgive me for what I say to you, but please understand. You are my true friend. We do you no harm. But you must stay out of the way. Travis killed my brother. He cheated this young man. He will be punished. Not by you. You're in the United States now, hey boy. You live by American law. 
American law is for whites, not Chinese. The law is for everybody. The color of your skin doesn't make you any different. While you're in this country, you'll not only obey the law, you'll get its protection, and you'll get justice. American justice will not bring back Kim Sung. Neither will another murder. Believe me, hey boy, if he's guilty, I want Travis punished as much as you do. But I promise you, I'll shoot the first man who lays a hand on him. Mr. Paladin, this man Sung will tell you who killed my brother. Him killed Kim Sung. Paris! Now, wait a minute. That's proof for you, Sheriff. It is. You tricked me, Paladin. I wouldn't go for that gun, Travis. I'd hate to cheat the hangman. Tricked me and took my money. And gave you excellent service. You hired me to protect you to save your life, and I have. You'll be perfectly safe. In jail. Mr. Paladin, I thought you had like uh, breakfast in your room this morning. Oh, wonderful. Come in. Yes, sir. Well, it's good to have you back, hey boy. Oh, I have you to thank. Manager say you would leave hotel if I did not come back to job. So, <laughs> uh, here I am. Uh, same uniform. What's the package on the tray? Oh, this uh, package for you. Oh. Yes, sir. Uh, you open it now? Oh, uh, yes. He's uh, my uncle, uh, Mr. Chung. Uh, Very grateful for all you did. We used the money you give us from Travis to bring my brother back to San Francisco for a uh, proper Chinese burial. Oh, why? It's the chess set I admired at the Mandarin. <laughs> Beautiful. So. Thank you. And my thanks to your uncle, Mr. Chung. How about a game of chess? Oh, uh, uh, later perhaps, but uh, now I must go sort mail for a new desk clerk. New desk clerk? Yes, sir. Uh, someone registered a strong complaint against old one. Someone did, huh? Well, well, what do you know about that? Uh, oh, yes, sir. Uh, very mysterious. Uh, desk clerk go. A new one hired today. Very mysterious. It's nice to be back. Gun will travel. Created by Herb Meadow and Sam Rolfe, is produced and directed by Norman McDonald and stars John Daner as Paladin with Ben Wright as Hayboy. Tonight's story was written by Albert Alley and adapted for radio by Frank Michael. Featured in the cast were Edgar Barrier, Paul Dubov, Lou Krugman, and Joseph Kearns. Join us again next week for Have Gun. Will travel. Mm-hmm.